Welcome to Green Talk by Green Care Solutions on KAA NBC Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, and YouTube. Today we have actor, comedian, and cannabis icon, and my grandfather, Tommy Chong. <laughs> this is part two. Yes, thank you guys. I'm Yunitsa Munoz. And I'm Brian Gonzalez with Green Care Solutions. Yes, this is an educational and cannabis-friendly show. You must be 21 years of age to listen. Sorry. But it is educational, so you guys are going to learn a lot. We have amazing GCS products here. We're on iHeartRadio and NBC Radio. Yeah, so give us a call at 951-609-4071. We've been featured on Forbes and Yahoo Finance, and then we're 13-time awarding for our products. Please follow us on our Instagram at GreenCareSolutions420, our website, GreenCareSolutions.com, and on our website for this talk show at GreenTalkNews.com. You've had such a lavish career. Mm -hmm. And what's so cool with how you started, I mean, you kind of just like pitched this idea of this of this story that you had with two friends involving cannabis, involving just Hollywood lifestyle and fun. Up in Smoke was supposed to be another movie. Uh, I got we I got tired of going to Australia every year to make you know, a movie. Well, no, to do uh, the live performances. Oh, to do the live performances. Yeah, Cheech and I, you know, we were big in Australia, so we would go to Australia when it was their winter, and it was our summer, and so we would spend a winter in Australia, and then come back for the winter in L.A. and go back and forth for years, and and I got tired of it. I, I told Cheech, I said, we got to do movies, man. We got to get out of this. And so I wrote a movie, and it was Jack and the Weed Stock. Jack and the Weed Stock. <laughs> that, made, that made sense. It was a great movie, great <laughs> idea, you know, where Cheech and I we were trying to get enough money to get tickets to go see a, the Stones. It was the Rolling Stones at the time. And, uh, and I come back, I got the tickets. No, I don't have the tickets. I, I instead of the tickets, I got a bag of weed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that says, makes sense. Where's the tickets? I said, well, we need weed, you know, to go to the concert with. And so, uh, you know, I uh, traded the tickets for the weed. <laughs> and the guy said, and Cheech went nuts, of course, and yeah. he takes the seeds and throws them outside. There were seeds. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and then, of course, this big pot plant grows. It's a giant thing. And we crawl up the thing and we meet the giant and all that. And it was a good movie. We were, we were, <laughs> I was all set to, to shoot it. But then Lou Adler got involved. Mm. And Lou wanted to do uh, Cheech and Chong's greatest hits. Mm. And so instead of the greatest hits, Cheech and I, we were talking about it. And we said, you know, it should be about Pedro and Man. Right, and so then we we said, okay, we'll do that, and then we just wrote the movie as we went along. So you guys didn't even have like the, the <clears throat> whole movie written out before. Well, they they always say uh, you know Cheech Chong did Up in Smoke without a script. No, you can't do a movie without a script. You need a script. You, you need yeah. a script, even if you write it after. Right, it's still a script, and so uh, we we wrote the script. Uh, we actually rewrote. Lou kept putting in the Cheech and Chong bits. You know, which were some of them were cut out of the movie, but Cheech and I, you know, we just kept rolling, doing what we always did. Yeah. You know, and you know, we create when we're ready to create. You know, we we were never uh, the type that would write out something first and then ask people, "What do you think?" We would just do just it. Just do it. Yeah. W was a lot of it improvised, or you guys totally, totally? The script itself was about forty pages. Yeah. yeah. And it was written on a yellow legal pad, <laughs> <laughs> which I still have. Oh, wow. Really? Which I still have. Yeah, oh, my still, God. Wow. It's proof if I have to go to court. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> How do you and Cheech meet? Cheech, he was up in Canada dodging the draft. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he hurt his leg in, in Banff skiing because he was a Mexican that should not have been on the, on the Black Diamond uh, yeah. slopes. You know, but they, they a couple of his so-called friends took him up there and says. You know, you're ready? Okay. And they pushed him. <laughs> and, he went, and he went down off that mountain. And, and he ended up breaking his leg. Compound oh. fracture. Oh. Ooh. That's was, not a, that's, yeah, that's horrible. The, the bone sticking through the yeah. skin, that kind oh. of thing. Ouch. And so he was in uh, walking around in crutches and that for a while. And, and, of course, he met this nurse that took care of him. You know, you can stay at my house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Cheech ended up in Calgary, uh, where I was uh, raised and born. Uh, not born, but I was raised there. And, and he met a lot of my childhood friends. And then, then he moved to Vancouver. Well, after he got hurt, he, he ended up in Vancouver. And then uh, he started working at, uh, what do you call it, um, 
doing everything uh-huh. to make a living. He was yeah. A, yeah. he was a Mexican in Canada trying to make a living. The mm-hmm. <laughs> first job he got was <laughs> as a cook. At, at, uh, at the, of course, they looked at him. He's Mexican. Of course, you could of cook. course you could cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're in there, and the first thing he was supposed to cook was a Denver sandwich. And Cheech didn't know what a Denver sandwich. What's <laughs> a Denver sandwich? So he just made up something. He just made up something. You don't know, I what, don't a know what it is. Yeah, either. it's a Canadian thing. And I'm thing. Mexican too, but maybe that's yeah, what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it's a Canadian thing. But I mean, yes, a Mexican for a sandwich. You're going to get a burrito. You know? Right. <laughs> that's a good sandwich. Yeah. So, so that's what Cheech did. And, and of course, the thing came flying back. He lost that job, and he ended up. Uh, he ended up writing for an underground paper called Poppin. Poppin. And and so then I, in the meantime I had started an improv group uh, with uh, strippers <laughs> in a strip you know, I, in I, a owned strip a, club. I owned a strip club and by the way you know how I got the clubs it was it's kind of amazing they were given to me the strippers no the clubs <laughs> <laughs> strippers cost money but all right the, yeah okay. the club <laughs> the first club I had was an after hours club the guy bought the building and he had he had a club up on top it was a dance hall. And the, there was an empty steakhouse below. And so he, he, he approached me and said, uh, would you like a, uh, a club? And, you know, I got a band, nothing else going on. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had a club, and it, it was empty for, it was really a rehearsal hall because mm-hmm. we couldn't have any, we didn't have any money to advertise. And so all we did was play and <clears throat> open the doors. No one would come until I met my wife, Shelby. Yeah, and then I, she was underage when I met her, and so we were playing uh, outside gigs to uh, to supplement our our nightclub, right? And uh, uh, so she she grabbed a ride from us from uh, the gig we were playing, and to the hot club where everybody was going, and and uh, we told her, well, we got a club. Why don't you come to ours? And she goes, nah, you know, no one's going that one. You know? <laughs> And so she went to the club, and because she was underage and no shoes, her and her sister. They didn't let her in. They didn't let her in. And so she brought everybody down to our club, and then we were packed every night from, from then on. And and then uh, uh, then we were given a, a, a strip club. Uh, same thing. It was a dinner club that wasn't making any money. And so we went in there and put the I, – actually, I was the one that – Started uh, Vancouver's first topless nightclub. Wow! Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's some good history. We right had to there. wear pa- yeah, the girls had to wear the pasties to make it legal. <laughs> anyway, I turned it into a, a improvisational comedy. It was like burlesque, hippie yeah. burlesque. And then Cheech, our straight guy, quit because his wife found out what he was doing <laughs> with <laughs> the like, strippers. Like, and no, so, no, no. Yeah, so so he got yarded away, and and this uh, mutual friend uh, brought Cheech in. And then as soon as I saw it, Cheech walked in the door. Uh, we, you know, we were back backstage, and I was kind of looking. I'd met him, you know, that earlier that uh, week, and then he said he'd come down to check out the club. And he come down, and he walked in the in the door with this gorgeous woman in this full length black mink <laughs> coat. Oh, she was gorgeous, and I I wasn't even looking at Cheech. I was looking at her, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this guy's hired because <laughs> I always judge men by their women. Right, you know? <laughs> if they got hot, if they got a hot chick. They must have something going on. Right. So and you met Cheech at a strip club then, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then Cheech okay. joined up. He joined the the the. the the gang, mm-hmm. and he was like the the third guy. You know, yeah. he was like he was writing and and observing more than mm-hmm. anything. And then we changed the the audience drastically from twenty bu- horny businessmen and bikers that would just throw money around to three hundred theater goers. Hmm. Who would oh, sit wow. there and count their change and that sip must, on a glass of wine? That must have been crazy. So we're losing money. We're well, the club was losing money because yeah, they wouldn't buy drinks. No, no, they would sit there, like I say, count their change and you know, and, they, <laughs> and sip their little wine. And so my brother actually fired us. You know, he said we have to go back to the old way. And so then she, and the whole group fell apart, and Cheech and I stayed together. Hmm. And we started a band first. We were going to play music first because he was a singer and I was a guitar player. But uh, we thought, well, we'll do a little comedy mm-hmm. to, to start mm-hmm. off with. And 
that little comedy was the whole show. Basically. Yeah. Think about the cannabis scene in, in Canada now. <clears throat> well, I, I describe Canada as a, a drunk that just woke up from a hangover. <laughs> right. You know? And all of a sudden, weed's legal. <laughs> now what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, what do we you do know that? what's really good? It's so poetic. The people that have no restrictions on their cannabis sales, use, or anything, are the natives. Yeah, that's the res, awesome. The res. And that's where I was up there. They paid me a big lump of money to go up there, and, and they started their own Weed Maps yeah. app. Oh, okay. And so I got an app going up there in Canada. But Because Canada said, uh, you know, they got a law saying you can't have celebrity endorsements. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. It's like Snoop Dogg tried it, and they shut him down. Willie tried it. They shut him hmm. down. I never tried it because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Canadian. I know that, you know, how stupid they can be, you know. So what you do, you use that, like, negative. You use it the other way. And I found out that when I found, when Paris and I, my son, found out that the natives, uh, they don't have any restrictions. Hmm. Yeah. And I found out. Uh, that I'm 8% native. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I told the guy, he said, man, great, man. Okay, you're one of us. And, and I'm definitely going to be one of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was that what, did you did you do what, uh, one of those uh, 23andMe or Ancestry.com? Uh, no, well, my uh, uh, sister-in-law, she did it all. She, you know, did the DNA and, ah, and cool. everything and found out I'm 8%. That meant my mother was 25%. And her mother was 50%. And her, that's my grandmother. Yeah, yeah. And my mother was born on a reservation in northern Manitoba. Wow. Oh. And in the middle of the reservation. That must have blew your mind to, to know that history. Because a lot of people don't know that far it was back. A big, it was a big secret. Yeah. The whole family. It was a big secret because there was like eight siblings. Yeah. And and then my native uh, grandmother committed suicide when, when after she had eight kids. She, she offed herself. And, and and they always told us that she was uh, Irish, hmm. but she was half native. You know what's crazy? And is, married to an Irishman. You know what's crazy? A lot of natives from that time were shamed for being natives. Totally. So they they often tried to like change their whole background, change their name. Because my great great grandmother, who was from a tribe in Chihuahua, Mexico, um, yeah, they they always tried to keep the tribe that they were from a secret. Yeah, so that they didn't get discriminated against yeah. or, or whatever, you know. It was survival. Yeah. Now yeah. everybody wants to like, hey, I yeah. want to make <laughs> hey, you know, I, how much the benefit. percentage <laughs> am I? Because I want to reap the. Yes. If we knew that, like you know, I found out that I was. Well, I I knew that I had native blood, but I didn't know how much. And you know, it, it turned out I was twenty, twenty one, twenty four percent. You know, Native American yeah, blood. Yeah. If I had wow. known this, well, well you I know it now. <laughs> well, yeah, you know it now. Hey, Canada. And same, same here. Yeah. That's why they got all the uh, casinos. Yeah. yeah. Casinos are crazy. Let me in. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can do it. You can do it. The thing is, uh, we need, uh, you know, famous people yeah. to come out. Oh, man. I'm I, ready. I'm, I'm here at your service. I'm a, a big hero in Canada. Now. I know you are. Oh, You're a hero everywhere. Not only you, I know everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm part of everything. The Chinese, I got white, and, and now I got native. All right, I'm ready to rum, rumble. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a new, a new, you know. Well, that's what well, you were asking you about Canada. The the laws, they what they try to do in Canada. They they did not tried. They co opted the liquor industry. Hmm. You you have to go to government uh, liquor outlets. Now it's changed. Now you could buy now you can buy wine in stores, and uh, you couldn't right. do it a few years ago. You had to go to outlets. You couldn't even go into a a, a woman was not allowed into. Uh, of the bars up there oh. without a, without an escort. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, and that was, yeah, they they were So just, now that they're just like totally legal with cannabis, it's like a total like whoa. <laughs> like total no, illegal. that's the trouble. It's okay. not. Oh wait, okay. No, what's happened is they kept the old laws mm -hmm. and they're not letting any cannabis uh, outlets open. Hmm. You know, except their government except the go government ran. You know, the yeah. government one and they're the worst. Yeah. And so now the black market is flourishing like crazy up there. Yeah. Well, I, I think that'll all change when they realize how much money they're losing. Yeah. As opposed to how much money they're it's making. Like, yeah, just like California. 
they, a prime but they're example. They're bureaucrats. They're bureaucrats, and they're brainwashed. It takes young, young, fresh blood that knows to get in there. Well, look at the natives. Like I say up yeah. there, man. They, they, they. There's no packaging uh, regulations. regulations. Yeah. They, they sell it in a baggie. That's crazy. Oh, wow, I didn't that's know that. that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure their edibles <laughs> so, are extremely so, potent. So, so, so let me let me go back for a second. So in terms of a celebrity brand, so if you're a celebrity brand. Canada will not have it. You're not allowed to. And Canada does not allow you anybody to uh, publicize marijuana. So you can't... Necessarily- they took, we, we were up there just recently, and we had pot leaves on our shirt, and, and they confiscated them. Oh, wow. wow. So, so it was you, merch. We were advertising cannabis. So they want the shops to exist, but they don't want any promotion of them. Yeah, that's crazy. No, like and it's not media shops. Here, I suppose. It's not shops. It's one or two shops. Or one or two shops. Yeah. Yeah. And so what they do, like when they have the four twenty uh, thing, is it's uh, what do you call it? Rogue. It's all rogue. Cannab- everybody sets up their cannabis things. There's so many they can't bust them. Right. And if they do bust them, uh, they got lawyers that'll get you off yeah. because it's contrary to Canadian law. Yeah. You know, you can't stop people from using their name, all that stuff. You know. Right. But so so because your name and likeness is on the packaging, that's why they rejected you, right? Yeah. What if what if you had a brand that didn't have your name, but you were you know you obviously owned it or whatever? Well, that's what we're doing. You know, we were trying to do that. See what happened in Canada? They they've got this uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, stock market stuff. Yeah. And it's all iffy it's all phony yeah you know the canadian stock market is where all the gangsters hang out right that's where they all put their money at they all hang out like you know they used to hang out in pool rooms and bars they hang out at the stock market in canada that's where all the money's at and so there's a ton of money there and they they're usually selling gold mines that don't exist and stuff like that now they're selling pot the pot stocks and they can't back it up. Med- Medmen's in trouble. Oh, yes, I, uh, I, I've heard uh, that. Aurora yeah. in Canada, they've taken down millions of dollars. You know what they did in Canada? They took out all this money, then they went over to Europe, and they bought up all this cheap land, and then they sold it back to themselves at a huge profit mm. to, to, put, uh, to, the grows, to put the grows in there. Right. You know, but they, they brought, bought the land for next to nothing, and then they doubled it or tripled it or whatever. To and it's create legal. value on the land. And that's legal. Wow. That's legal. They can legally wow. do that, but it's not. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. ethical, that's but some serious it's serious BS right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's some serious BS. But it, but it's working its way out. See, what's yeah. happening in Canada is always it's like the liquor. Yeah. At one time, you had to go to the liquor control board to buy your booze. And then they would close at 11.30 a Saturday night yeah. because of the, the church laws. Right. Well, then the bootleggers would open up, you know, they'd be open they'd, all They're the open 24-7. And so, so, yeah. So, so liquor stores closed. Well, we weren't going there anyway. Go, go to Chinatown, go in the back alley. Of course, you get buy buy some attack dogs, and then you have, <laughs> then you pay for your beer and you get your booze. Yeah, and that's the way Canada's always worked, and that's the way it's working now with the with the pot. Mm. Still, yeah, you know, except for the natives and oh, the natives is crazy. The, the and, natives are sitting back laughing. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, London, London, Ontario, uh, London, Ontario. Remember. You know how the little fruit stands and yeah, and that well, they're all marijuana stands. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. oh man, I can't wait to go if, back if, and if see that. A, if there's a, a a building, anything kind of building, <laughs> it's got marijuana sold here. <laughs> hey, I got wow. a ba- I got bags of weed right here. Come, I, I was at oh, you know, big celebrity because you know, in part native. They and this is in London. They had me to their 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 place, their home. You know. And it's oh so typical, you know, homeboy stuff, you know, you know, the the homemade stuff on the walls and yeah, you know, little trinkets and and, and so here we are. Uh, and so I said, where where, where, do, where do you go your pot? He's all oh, out in the back. I said, well, do you want to show me? I'm looking for you know the grows in there, and I go back there, and there's weeds and everything growing up, and there's about three little plants. <laughs> <laughs> In there, I said, "There's your plant." He's, like, "Oh yeah, yeah." It's on its way. <laughs> but what they do, they 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 they, they get it from the other grows, see, and, and then the it gets funneled through. And the other thing in Canada is like here too, you can't bank your money. Yeah, 
Save so the area. biggest yeah. sales up there is uh, safes, walk-in safes. Yeah. So yeah. You, you put all your money in there. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's I think that's sort of happening here with a lot of the dispensaries because, you, you know, the banks won't accept the money. But you know what they're doing in Canada? They're getting other businesses like uh, laundromats, like uh, oh, yeah. service stations. That's what they do gas here. Gas stations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like. yeah. And so what happens, gee, that laundromat's making a lot of money these days. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's going on here? Oh, people <laughs> got dirty clothes, I guess. <laughs> got a whole lot of dirty clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's how, you, that's how you, you launder your money. Yeah. That's how they're, they're doing it. Yeah. And, and during the housing crisis. Now more people are going to come here saying, oh, I'm the landlord. I need the help landlord. with it after they watch this. Like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> the girl's like. <laughs> but hey, we're telling the truth. Yeah. yeah. They can't this arrest This is what's going people. on. This is what's but going on out there. I don't, I don't carry weed with me anywhere. Now yeah. I anymore. carry it all the time just so you know <laughs> when you're following me and watching. <laughs> this is what I carry. I carry the Chong, Tommy Chong's cannabis infused uh, breast strips. Okay. And 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 uh, you can take them anywhere. I had them on the plane, sitting on the plane. I said, "Well, I think I'll get high." And I opened it up. <laughs> I got this little, little, little thing here. I put it on my tongue. Well, it is not loud. Not you know? loud. Wow. There you go. Because I think that that's that's one of the things about smoking weed. You can smell it. It's very loud. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You can smell it. It's on yeah. volume eleven. <laughs> yeah, and you can't go in hotels like in Denver. Oh man, you, there's nowhere to smoke. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do that. Uh, you know uh, what? There are smoke friendly hotels. It's just somebody has to do the diligence and yeah. find it. But a lot of the times, I'll have to pay that three hundred dollar fine because everybody comes to my room like it's church to smoke. <laughs> of course, like every band I'm in. <laughs> of course, they're coming well, to my room to smoke. Do you, do you know about the shower cap over there? Oh the, yeah, the smoke. Oh alarm? yeah, I, I learned that from uh, a stewardess on a flight one time because one of the, one of our guys went into one of the bathrooms and he had one. Of, remember the sneak of tokes when they used to yeah. have those? He went in there because he was so sketched out on the flight because we were going to Europe. He went. And, he went and blazed a sneak of toke in the bathroom, and the the, the flight attendant. Knew who we were, so she goes. She comes to us and says, "Hey, um, what did you do to the smoke detector?" I'm like nothing. Why? Because I know you smoked in there and it didn't go off. What'd you guys do? You didn't disable it, did you? Because that's a huge fine. So no, we didn't. We didn't touch the thing. You know, we didn't. We didn't necessarily want to give up how we did it. But she goes, <laughs> "Okay, look, next time use a shower cap over, <laughs> oh, wow. over the deal." And I'm like. Boom. A shower cap. Wow. Forever have I used shower caps. Yeah. Over the, I'll leave them in the room and, the, the you know, like when they come and clean up the room after you're gone, I, they must like, what the hell is this shower cap doing? <laughs> oh, they're wondering why you're traveling with so many shower caps in your oh, luggage. Yeah. <laughs> like I would carry a, a whole bag of them. So in case the room didn't have them, yes. you just put them up. Yeah. That's so funny. You know? What would you say would be like your favorite way to medicate? To medicate? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, flour, I feel like, is a go-to for it, so many. But now it, there's so many options. I different know. Ways. It, it, about years ago, it used to be I'd, I'd do any drug given to me by a naked woman. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mantra years ago. But now, uh, it's what's ever there. Mm-hmm. What's ever there. And this, I guess, the strips. Is and uh, what B. Rowe was saying, that's true. It's not loud. It's n- there's no sense. It's like incognito, you're on a flight, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, you know, I give it to some uh, guys that are doing a, a game, a Bud uh, Grow uh, game up in Vancouver. They took me to a hockey game. And we're watching the hockey game. I passed these out, handed them down. They they did it. Next thing you know, they're, oh, can we have some beer up here? <laughs> they, they hit the munchies, hit them. <laughs> Next thing you know, they got popcorn, beer, hot dogs. And Probably by the second those quarter, yeah. Are, those drips are really good, man. <laughs> How many milligrams are in these? I think 20. I need glasses, and these are not the ones. So I can... No, 100. <laughs> this has got 100. Oh, wow. 160. Yeah, so they're, they're impactful. Impactful, yes. yeah. indeed. Yeah. They will, they will right into do, your stream. Yeah, they will do the trick. Yes. Well, they'll have, like me, they'll have me talking nonstop, you know. Did you have some other products, too, like some hookah products we were talking about? We've got everything. We've okay. got the, the hemp. We got the gummies. We got everything. Yeah, because I saw you. Uh, we'll let you take one of the hookah, um, you know, can of hookahs. We have the CBD, and then take them. See what you 
you know what you think about you it like too. Huka. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you, you know, it's yeah. crazy. I was I was mentioning this early before the show is that I kind of met both of you guys at the same time. It was quick, but it was at the Blaze Tommy Chong's Blazer Cup oh, at yeah. the yeah. Orange Show in San Bernardino, 2017. Yeah, that was the first time we ever answered our product. We won. And then I met you briefly, and then you came to our booth and smoked our THC yeah. version of that. Mm. And um, I, I remember you said that. I don't really say this too often, but you know what? Man, it's got me a little high here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was just crazy. And then now we're here. Fast now forward a few years this. later, man. Yeah, this is this the, the hemp is saving the world. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is in more ways than one. And building-wise, too. Yeah. You know, they got Hemp Creek. Have you heard of that? Hemp Creek? Hemp Creek. Like concrete. Oh, Hemp Creek. Oh, yeah. actually, I yeah. haven't heard of that. You haven't heard? No. Wow. Well, they got That's blocks, awesome. building blocks made out of hemp. Wow. It, it mixed with, I guess, with concrete. Yeah, or of yeah. course, yeah. But it's uh, hemp creek, and it's lighter, and it's... Fire yeah, more work. efficient, the fireproof, efficient. Y- like fireproof, huh? you know, that's the crazy thing is that is that um, Jack Carrere was talking about these type of things, you know, way back when he wrote uh, "Emperor Wears No Clothes." In, back in the eighties, yeah. back in the eighties. I mean, yeah. he was so ahead of the game because everything that he was talking about is actually happening now. Yeah, it's just you know, it it took a minute, and unfortunately, he ha- he he didn't get to see it the way that it's no. That it's um, you but know, he's, evolving. He, he, he's here somewhere. He is here somewhere. He's back. For sure. He's back. Yeah, yeah. We keep you don't, you don't stay there too long. Yeah, <laughs> you just go back and change your clothes or change your body and come back. And, yeah, but and it, it's back incarnated. In the game. It's a, it's oh, a yeah. trip though because yeah. he was a true visionary because he saw yeah. the possibilities and what could happen, and you know he went out of his way to educate people. To make sure that it would happen. So much so he lost his voice. Yeah. Remember? He had yeah. laryngitis for the longest time, and then he got cancer, and then he still still kept preaching the gospel. Yeah, he was, Yeah, he Jack was, was a cool guy. We True freedom fighter, for sure. When they changed, the, when they, the first medical thing came in, in the 80s, Jack called me up. He said, let's get our medical card. He said, where, <laughs> where do you get that? He's, he's I got a guy, and he goes down. We went down to the doctor. And he got the big uh, sheet saying that you're medical. And then we shrunk him to uh, cards. And so when I got busted, I showed the, the DEA my card. And he goes, he laughed at it. He goes, yeah, right. <laughs> 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 but now you can, I, I got stopped in uh, Detroit with my son, Paris. And we're coming through. And they had just changed the law that day. Yeah. And oh, we got wow. stopped at the airport. And they jacked Paris up and. <laughs> of course, my son, you know, he said, what's this? And he said, oh, that belongs to my dad. <laughs> and they look at your dad, which is you. Yeah. So, <laughs> my dad, he's 80 years old. He's He's got cancer. You know, that's his medicine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they made us stay there, and they, they took it up to the police, the old way, you know, yeah. and to, the, to, to the chief, you know, in the airport. And the, the, then the, it took a while before the chief came down. He came down with all his guys, you know. I mean, okay, what's going on here? And he said, well, we got this. Uh, we found this pot. He said, oh, let him go. What? He said, let him go. And what, what about the pot? He said, give back. Give back to him. Hmm. Did Perry, he recognize you? Was he like, Well, Paris, told, him, Paris took Trump. him aside, told him, and said that, you know, we have the doctors of uh, okay and everything. We don't have it with us. And we'll email it. And the you. laws had just changed too. And the law had just changed. The guy said, "Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. E- 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 email me that when you get there." And which which we did. You know? yeah. Of course, we had to go get one. You know? Right. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how, like, all this is been... dated. Yeah. <laughs> but like you know, for treating cancer or other illnesses, this has been on our planet for so so many years, hundreds and hundreds forever. of years, thousands of years. Yeah. No, forever. Since the beginning forever. of our planet, right? Since the beginning of time. Yeah. It was. And, it was. A and gift. it was illegal for the longest time in our generation of you know since we've been alive yeah. i suppose so and now we have all these pharmaceutical chemicals that they give us for when we're sick and it can make us more sick it's horrible for our Absolutely. livers and has side effects oh, sometimes yeah. doesn't even help us imagine what hemp can do by like saving trees i mean ma- going back to making paper how oh, yeah. quick does hemp grow rather than a use, tree yeah. and how many years does that take to grow that was also for the book. it's the yeah. simple things uh, you, there wouldn't have been a tobacco industry if it wasn't for hemp. yeah absolutely. you know what they would do they would grow hemp, then plow it into the ground, and then the tobacco plants, which were notorious for robbing everything out of the ground, they would rejuvenate. And, and it was a hemp plant that kept the tobacco industry going. Oh, wow. And now now the hemp plant's taking over and tobacco is disappearing. Yeah. It's leaving. Mm-hmm. No, it, it, it's always been around. Yes, you know, yes. That, no, just saying it's so interesting how it's always been around. It's here on our planet, and it heals us. But then 
there's other stuff that we are given through scripts from our physicians to take that well, at the end of the day has side effects. It might not yeah, ever plus, heal us. Plus the internet has been informing us more than we have the last 20 years. Prior to that, we had to believe what was on the radio, newspaper, or, and TV. Oh, yeah. So Well, your, everybody's ancestors knew better, yeah. you know, and that's sure. why they would carry the weed across the border because it was currency, it was medicine, it was uh, made you feel good. Mm -hmm. you know, it was all yeah. those things. It was your medicine. Yeah. You, you, you carried it across. And, and, and medicine for your animals, too. Pets. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you think about it, a lot of these um, corporations like the pharmaceutical companies and, and uh, who was doing the paper back then, they, they were... Hertz. Th Hertz. They were yeah. threatened by, by cannabis because yeah. a lot of this, the products that were made from them could be made cheaper with with cannabis yeah. or with hemp actually with hemp, yeah. yeah and uh you know when you have corporations on on that level they have lobbyists that, yeah. that work in the political structure and they lobby against cannabis and put the anti-propaganda you know out there for so and long. they use racism yeah and misinformation mm -hmm. yeah racism is is the biggest thing that's what's going on now yeah with with Trump is they, they use that race uh, thing thing all yeah. the time, yeah. and, and it's crazy, yeah. Because uh, they're the ones you know the that found out that cannabis is medicine, yeah. And the Chinese for sure they they have well, they've written been down doing, yeah forever forever. And in India too. I mean, I've been to India and they it's just there. It's okay. It's everywhere. Yeah. They do. They yeah. produce a lot of hash in India, right? Oh yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. because in the in the mountains in the Himalayas it's too high for it actually to be. Um, smokable cannabis. Have you heard about uh, temple balls? I have. I have never seen Do one. Do you know what temple balls were? What's that? When they harvest uh, the hash, they they would go through the fields, you know, and the, and the pollen yeah. on the plants would stick to their leather aprons and their, and their naked bodies. Right. And they would go through there and, and they would get all the, the, the hemp uh, the marijuana dust on their bodies. Yeah. Then they go into a, a room, and they would scrape it off and make and, it and make 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 their hemp or make their hash. The the purest of the pure would float to the top of the to the cave or wherever they were mm. in, and they, that's the one they would scrape off and they would make balls, and it would be for the temple because wow. it was the purest hash you could buy. Wow. And so that, that was donated to the temple. They always gave a, a good amount to the temples, to the to the religious, because that's yeah. that was their religion. Would the temples sell them or smoke them? They would smoke them. All right. And it was that's the temple, temple balls. I'm down with the, right there. The temple balls. That, <laughs> that was the purest of the pure. And it's been going on forever. And see so, what, so it the, still happens today. No, the reason, the reason uh, <laughs> that it's so illegal all over the world still is because the United States, they had this uh, agreement signed by the, uh, all the major countries in the world, and it was this anti-marijuana pledge that every country would pledge to, to eradicate marijuana. And, and that is still in effect, all these countries. And what the United States was doing was giving money, like to the island of Palau, the United States would give a million dollars a year to eradicate the marijuana crops. And so the Palauans would grow two crops, one to eradicate and one to smoke. Right. And that's how they, they survived. Wow. And, but they, they got the million dollars, you know, goes into the treasury, and then they still got their weed. Hmm. And, and that's what's going on right now. India, uh, 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 ta uh, Pakistan. Pakistan and India had the best hash ever in the world. Afghanistan one time, too, right? In Afghanistan, they had the the king stamp on on the the good hash. It was so legal, so legal. And then they made that the deal with the states to get money, and that's what what uh, it's still going on. Hmm. It's still happening. Montel Williams even said there's like a patent right now for even just like different types of. Um, Cannabis products too in the U.S. I didn't even know about because he was educating yeah, us. Yeah, the U.S. Out. government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, well, the government took out a patent way, way back. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trouble is, you can't patent a plant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't. You can't patent the, the government. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't patent. You can't they, trademark. They tried. You can't they, trademark or patent. Yeah, mm -hmm. they tried. They tried their best. Yeah, it's medicine. It's medicine. medicine. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. And people don't like to hear it, you know, especially uh, my son, you know, because. 
we're in the recreational business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad, don't say that. But it's true. Yeah. It's it's medicine. It should be treated as medicine. It, it yeah. No matter any, how you call it, recreational it medical. It's, it's, it shouldn't be any tax. It should be uh, the same as the, you know the sidewalk vendors or something. You know, selling mm-hmm. something. Yeah. You, you should be able to go buy your weed. Uh, you know, off and use it for whatever you want to use it for, that's whether right. it's recreational or medicinal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, because, that's like the CRV tax for sodas. It didn't stop anybody from buying it, but look how much tax money the government's getting just from that. I mean, yeah. something simple like that with marijuana just, I mean, jeez, I mean, you can make a lot and, of money. And, and that's and it's been proven, too, that the less you charge for tax, the more money you make. Because yeah. everybody can pay two cents. Which which mm-hmm. is what is mind-boggling in terms of our taxes in, here in California, yeah. how high they are um, in the cannabis industry, let alone just the state. <clears throat> The cannabis industry is probably the highest taxed industry in California. If you do it legal. Right. And <laughs> and and you're forced not to do it legal. Yep. And and don't forget too, you're also you're not just supporting, you know, your your homeboys. You're supporting the law enforcement. Right. The the legal system right. in, in in America. Because they depend they depend on upon, those tax dollars. On those mm-hmm. that the forfeiture laws. You know, when they grabbed your stuff, you know, and they kept it, that's how they bought their new uh, AKs, 47s, and their, yeah. uh, their Humvees and all that. All their tactical gear. Yeah, all their tactical gear. Yeah, and, and the bad cops would buy the boats and the second homes. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they said, you know? fuck the tactical yeah. gear. Yeah, because they would grab people. I had a buddy, <laughs> I had a buddy in Vancouver that was a, a courier for the Hells Angels, and what he would do, he would rent a U-Haul, drive a U-Haul full of weed up to California and, and put it in a safe house and then get his money and come back. And the, the DEA grabbed him. And they, all they wanted to know was where the safe house was. Hmm. And they didn't charge him. They, they found out where the safe house was. They grabbed the money that they had, and then they just let him go. And so they went back to, and the trouble is, you don't uh, explain stuff to the Hells Angels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, man, I, I lost some thing. You know? well, no, you don't. And, and they said, no, you never lost it. No, no. you're still going to pay for yes, it. Yes. Yeah, and that's what he had to do. He had to pay. But it was, it was uh, the dirty DEA agents here and, and, uh, and probably the judge or whoever else involved in it man and that's big money that was just one one shipment can you imagine how many shipments they grabbed oh yeah money can definitely stir up all the greed and everything yeah yeah thank you so very much tommy for coming on the show today and i loved everything we were talking about it was very informative very educational and i thank you for wearing that outfit you wore thank you thank you i i don't know what it is but i always like wearing black but something about like these like, I don't know, I feel like I look kind of like goth sometimes, but like a girly goth. I don't know, because <laughs> I, I always have, like, makeup done, but I always wear black. But thank you. <laughs> no, I just like the parts that are showing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank right you. I'll take, it, I'll take that compliment. Well, we're definitely going to give you some GCS products. Thank um, you. Let us know if you like the tinctures, everything. we got some doggy treats if you have any, you know, pets or anything like that. And this oh, is yeah, one of our favorite ones, the vegan uh, I, I had one. one. Yeah. I, I love them. Yeah, I, I had them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that because I'm really stoned either. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in here to Green Talk. I'm Yunita Munoz, and here with my amazing co-host. I've been Brian Gonzalez, and I appreciate you, Tommy, for coming on. My pleasure. Word up. I'm Be Real. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Check out the Dr. Green Thumb dispensaries. And uh, man, thank you, Tommy. For My pleasure. Thank you. Through. Always nice. Thank you. Till next time, everyone.